Hello folks, Sam Owens here, and uh, I have a highly sophisticated piece of specialized equipment, Vivor, and it is a optical fiber fusion splicer, and it's model ALK T2. And uh, it takes uh, people with uh, specialized knowledge in fiber optics to operate it, so I won't be able to actually demonstrate the use of it, uh, but I think we can look and see some of the features, the menu, and uh, the basic uh, operation. You get the splicer unit. Uh, you get a, uh, uh, this is a cleaver to uh, condition the ends of the two pieces of fiber. Very instrumental. Uh, you also get a charger, an AC adapter charger, and you get a, a battery supply. And right here you can check the battery supply on this one. It's fully charged. And uh, we'll put that in in a moment. Uh, you also get uh, some fiber stri uh, stripping tools. And uh, this one looks like it uh, slides in from this end. And there's a measurement here that will allow you to, to put it to a certain point and strip it off. Uh, let's uh, look at one other thing. You get a nice bag here. And this bag has uh, several compartments right in the front. Uh, it's got a strap. So you can put this around your shoulder or around your neck and hook to these D-rings on either side. And it looks like that you can mount or set this in the lid of this. It's got a cushioned area that you could use it as a platform uh, for operating the splicer uh, if that's a feature that works. And uh, we'll see a diagram up there of that uh, operation. Uh, in the top, this is where you're going to put the splicer and some of the other components in here. This is the place that you could set this and operate it uh, like I showed. And they show in the photo up there that I had previously put up. Uh, but the splicer goes into this location and this is the lid that goes over it. You have compartments on the side. You have a place to put your manual up here. And over on either side are places that you can put some of this other uh, tools and supplies. This is for the alcohol that uh, you need to clean the fiber with. Uh, very important. And so they give you a little uh, squirt bottle there. And also uh, a little dust atomizer, uh, or actually a it blows out air, sucks it in and blows it out. Uh, clean things off. And this right here is a cooling tray. Uh, as you splice fiber, uh, you're going to have to heat the ends, some shrink over it, uh, the covering that's going to cover the splice. And right here is a place that this goes, and you can cool this, uh, I understand. Cooling tray. I believe that's what they call it. And uh, let's see. That pretty much covers what you get in the uh, parts. This is where you can charge it right here. And you put this, if you want this uh, AC adapter, and you plug this in. Well, I've already charged it up, but if it were going to charge, it would be blinking one of the lights or all of the lights. If they're all blinking, it's, it's charging up uh, fully. Uh, if only one light is blinking, it's only like uh, uh, just a few percentage down. It's been charged up, so I don't really need to charge it. Now. Uh, you could have more than one battery, so each battery can be charged, and you could go to the field with several batteries charged up uh, if you don't have AC adapter plug. Uh, and 
if uh, if you want you can charge the unit from this port right here which will charge it up and we plug this in and we can power up from that point but like I say the battery is already charged up and this is showing us that we have power on it right there the screen is not uh, come on but right there is the symbol for the battery is being charged but it looks like it's fully charged and it just went out of charging so when this is red light is blinking it's charging in this idle state all right i'm just going to go ahead and unplug this because we don't need that with the full charge battery and we're going to operate from it in a little bit uh, this is the uh, cover on some of the connections dc in and i'm going to kind of tell you what you got here uh, you have a, uh, a VFL port. These are for meters. Uh, here is one for a, uh, a power meter connection point right there. And also you have a USB port right here. Uh, that's a Class C. And you have a USB port right here that you could charge up items and this would be a USB that you could charge your phone or uh, like a, a, a smartphone you might need out in the field uh, to communicate back to the office uh, so there you go and uh, this says DC OPM USB VFL and it's a cover here and this is uh, can take the weatherproofing up above you see uh, it will handle rain 55 degrees centigrade temperatures to minus 20 uh, centigrade uh, temperature snowy and 5 km altitude so uh, it's going to work under various conditions here are the operation buttons right here and in the manual they show you each of the operation buttons and what they do starting at the top this is the power button for to turn the power on and off and let's turn it on one click will bring the uh, screen up and then right here is telling you that uh, before you use this you have to calibrate the arc uh, ARC and uh, this requires a fiber cable in there to test and set it for the altitude the temperature and everything is calibrated to the location that you're using this for the first time and then from there on it'll be ready to go so we can't do that because i don't have uh, the uh, fiber optic cable uh, to actually do it and i don't fully understand how to do it but i'm sure the folks that are seeing this know exactly what to do. Now, when I want to go into the main menu, I can go to the menu button, which is right here. So we're going to bypass that. And right here is Arc Connection. Uh, it's telling me how to do it. And I can either go back with the uh, XY or I can do Enter and it'll take me into the next screen which is right there hit that again ah there's what I wanted this is a menu uh, that you can get splice mode now you have arrows here that you can direct I could go down up and right to heating mode uh, when you're doing the heating application after you splice functions let's see if we want to go into function we would hit the menu key right here and then it gives me all kinds of options that I can use these arrows right here to run through there and I'll just do it right there it's a tension test auto starting force heating auto heating arc compensation and now I can use it to go down again and it just keeps on going force splice 
and I'll just run right up. USB power is on. Light switch. Auto save splicing. So you see once you get to the bottom, then you've got the up arrow will go back. So that's the end of that. Now I can go back to my main menu by hitting the uh, XY and now I can go on to another. I'm not going to go to each one of these uh, maintenance. Let's just look at that one time just to see another one. Same thing, everything is right here in these uh, five areas. Arc, correction, clean electrodes, replace electrodes, detect system parameters, correct LED and see you can go no more. So I can just go back or I can go over here and I could go to one of the other areas. Let's see how far down we can go. That's it, what's on here. And uh, they're always showing your, your battery there. And uh, each of these buttons here in the operation buttons is described here and what it does. And also, you have uh, shortcut buttons. This is actually describing all of the menu buttons that I was just going through. So the, the uh, user manual is going to be very useful in finding out which feature you need and what uh, button is going to handle it. Tell you, I'm going to turn the power off. And you press it and hold it, and it'll turn off. Now it's off. Let's look at a couple of other things. Before you're going to use the splicer, you need the cleaver. And the cleaver is right here. And what it does, I understand, and you always have this, uh, once you lift this up and this up, you're going to put a piece of fiber in here. And there's measurements that determine how long that's going to be and this is a cutting wheel right here that you would have it in this position right here back towards you and it even says it there that little cutting wheel is adjustable and there's also some little instructions and an allen tool uh, and i'm sure there's a lot of fellows out there or girls that uh, know how to calibrate this but you need to know how to operate it uh, and that's where experience comes in, and I'm sure you have it. Okay, I just know basically you put this in, you've stripped it out, it's gonna be stand, the fiber is gonna be coming out to a certain point, and that's where you would use a stripper to help you get that covering off to get to the fiber. Then you need to be able to clean the fiber with alcohol to get it all of the material that's on the fiber protecting it cleaned off. Then you lay it across there, then you pull this down, and I understand you push that. The little cutting wheel is going to cut that fiber at the precise location that it needs. You're going to do both ends. This is the cleaver, fiber cleaver that you need to begin this uh, splicing function. So, you got one, and it looks like a good one. Now, uh, once you've done that, then you can use this. Open this lid up and right here is the area that you're going to put your fibers in and this is going to make the fusion here. Now this is where your experience, you know how to uh, fuse the fibers together and I'm not sure about that but I see you have the tool here to do it and the first thing you have to do your arc calibration first so you have to put one in there and get it to where it's uh, just right and calibrated and then you be can begin to put it to work put them in there close this down close the lid and then you go through the actual instructions on uh, doing the uh, fiber fusion splicing operation well i can't begin to really tell you that but i'm sure you already know how you just need the equipment and i'm trying to tell you this is what's going to
do the job for you. And your experience is going to be able to find that this has the features you need. Okay, once it uh, has been fused, then you've got a heating area right up here that you're going to take that fiber connection, lay it in there, drop this over, and hit the heating section. And that will be described in here. And you know how to heat it up and get the insulation over it and all of that. And then somewhere along the line, this little cooling tray uh, helps uh, solve the problem. And it mounts right on the back right here. And there you go. It looks like it's covered all of the features you need for fiber optic fusion splicing. Uh, or, yeah, fiber optic fiber fusion splicer. Now up to the right, you're gonna see that this has six motor high precision clad uh, alignment. So you see what uh, uh, it will do. And I'm sure this uh, is important, uh, those six motors. Now here you see the three-in-one fiber holder and the different types of fibers it will hold, uh, which uh, would be important in this line of work. Now here are the specs on this uh, uh, unit, this model ALK2T2. Uh, and uh, I'm sure a lot of those uh, specifications are going to determine that uh, this is a uh, top quality product that can do the job for you in the fiber optics uh, fusion. Now uh, <clears throat> it has uh, it can operate much longer 200 times operation uh, when you're out there in the field uh, this could uh, uh, mean a lot uh, in production. It has dual white LED illumination lamps in the area of the uh, where the, uh, the fiber is going to be fused. And uh, at night, this uh, might be important to be able to see what you're doing. Now, I'm sure this is a big plus. Uh, you get a visual splicing status. You want to know when you have a good splice. And this is supposed to uh, tell you that and uh, experience uh, helps a lot in this area. Excellent splicing performance. That's the top job for this uh, product. And it does uh, 6S and 9S uh, fiber splicing. So uh, that uh, may be something uh, that uh, means a lot to you.